to principles of marketing class, a unit that is offered in the School of Business and Economic Department of Management. The unit code is BBM 1242, and I'm your instructor, Susan Nyokabe. We start with the course outline, and with the course outline, uh, you find that the unit provides the students with the basic business knowledge in marketing in an effort to demonstrate the skills to improve the firm's performance. The course also has the expected outcomes, which one is to explain the origin, nature, and application of marketing, and to describe the contemporary marketing environment as well as the concept of marketing mix. The cost structure we look at today, we are going to look at the introduction and the overview of marketing. We are also going to look at the definition of marketing, the historical perspectives of marketing, marketing and selling, we will be differentiating the marketing and selling, and also we are going to look at the core concept of marketing, and these are the main terms that we expect in the marketing course, as well as understanding how we manage marketing and also the challenges being faced today by marketers in the 21st century. And then we are going also to look at the marketing environment. And in the marketing environment, we look at the internal environment as well as the external environment and how the marketing responds to the different marketing environment. Uh, our third topic should be the marketing mix decisions and here this is where we look at the, this is the, the core of the principles of marketing where we look at the four P's, where we look at the product, the price, the promotion and distribution of what we call place. Then we look at the marketing research, information systems and marketing intelligence as well as and here we are going to look at the various definitions, the importance of marketing research. From there, we are going to look at the consumer markets. And at this point, we look at the consumer behavior, the nature and the structure of the consumer markets, and also the factors that influence the consumer behavior. We are also going to look at the buying decision process, as well as the five-stage model of behavioral decision theory. Uh, also, we are supposed to know the, the difference between the consumer markets and the business markets. And we look at the nature and the structure of the business markets as well as the decision process of business markets. And also we are supposed to buy, look at the business buyer's behavior. Uh, our other topic in the cost structure is what we call the market segmentation, targeting, positioning, and this is for competitive advantage. So we define the various levels of market segmentation, the basis of market segmentation, the targeting patterns, and also the market positioning. Um, we also look at the critiques, or what the critiques say about marketing, because it's not favorable to everyone. And also we look at the ethical concepts in marketing. This course, after we are expected to have tutorials, discussion groups, individual assignments, and also look at case studies. And we are also expected to go through evaluation where we do continuous assessment tests, as well as takeaway assignments and term papers, and of course, the final examination. We have the core reading materials as, as at by the screen, and we are going now to start with the first topic for today. And this is basically the introduction to understand what is marketing? Marketing, we're also supposed to know what is the marketing concept and how marketing has changed, what are the marketing functions, and basically who performs them. Uh, so we start by understanding what is marketing. One of the things we need to understand is marketing is all around us and they affect us in our day-to-day -day, uh, interactions and in our day-to-day -day living. You'll find that marketing is an organizational function and a correction of processes designed to plan for, create, communicate, and deliver value to customers and build effective customer relationships in a way that benefits the organization and its stakeholders. So as you can see that 
in marketing, you have to identify the needs and then come up with a product that will suit those needs of the customers to ensure they are well satisfied. Um, another thing we need to note about marketing is that it's, an, uh, it's also an organizational function along with the human resource, finance, production, and um, we, so it's, it, it's, a core, it's a core component of any organization and it is as well as specific processes such as assembly, pricing, and promoting. It's under, undertaken by most organizations. This leads to the development of products, services, ideas, in which leads to the fulfillment of the organizational goals. And basically for the sole purpose or the main purpose or the ultimate purpose of profitability. So we also see that marketing is more than just developing, advertising, and selling a product. It's about creating value for customers, which in turn keeps the customers coming back again and again. So repeat customers allow the organization to produce profits. Remember, they're also uh, uh, cheap to maintain. They do not incur, the organization do not incur so much trying to attract the already repeat customers, and that's why most organizations should strive for retaining their customers. Um, we also look at marketing can be applied to both tangible and intangible items, such as the ones listed below. And basically, this is what is marketed. When someone asks you, what do you market? It can be either places, and these are the ones we call destinations, ideas or courses, products, which are basically the goods, the tangible ones, services, the ones that are intangible, then people, events, and so on. So these are the different forms that product can take or the different uh, types of products. What is the marketing concept and how has marketing changed? So the marketing concept is an organizational philosophy dedicated to understanding and fulfilling consumer needs through creation of value. We had also mentioned earlier that value creation is key in marketing. So as you can see, creating value, creating value for customers through understanding their wants and needs allow businesses to develop stronger customer relations. It allows businesses to develop uh, stronger customer relations. And this also helps in building customer loyalty. So companies build customer relationship through its customer relationship management, which is called the CRM activities. To know which customers to build relationship, companies need to understand a customer lifetime value. That is which who, in terms of the projected sales and profits, a customer is expected to generate within a particular uh, then we look at the evolution of marketing evolution of marketing marketing has evolved over a long time and we are coming from where we used to do mass production where the customer needs were not uh, specific to where the customer's needs are more identified as specific to suit in the in individuals or groups that have similar characteristics. And for that reason, you can see over time we have had different concepts of marketing, which we are going to discuss below. So marketing, as we are saying, has evolved from the production orientation in which businesses produce the type of product that they want to produce to today's uh, marketing orientation where products are produced according to the needs of the customers. Let's look at the, the, the various management, uh, marketing management philosophies. There are several alternatives, philosophies. They are also referred to as orientations or concepts or even principles. And there are five of them, or the most popular ones are the five, which guide the organization in their efforts to carry out their marketing goals. 
uh, decisions about the weight given decisions about the weight given the interest of the organization customers and the society's needs to be made by marketing managers and we are saying that there are five alternative concepts or principles under which organizations conduct their marketing uh, businesses and they are the production concept the selling concept the product concept the marketing concept and the societal marketing concept what is production concept production concept or what does production what does each of these concepts hold so production concept holds that consumer will favor products that are available and are highly affordable and that management and therefore management focuses on improving production and distribution efficiency so production do not think about the customer all they think is how to achieve a uh, low cost and also to ensure their products are easily and uh, conveniently available therefore the needs of the customers are not considered and basically this is more of what is referred as mass marketing and a good example today's society would be uh, like our public schools you find that they are everywhere they are affordable and they are the, 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 the focus is basically on improving the efficiency of production and also the distribution. Then we have the, what you call the, the, product, the product concept, the product concept, and this is basically opposite of the production concept because uh, the product concept holds that consumers favor quality products that are reasonably priced. And therefore, retro promotion effort is required. And that consumer will favor products that offer the most quality performance and the most quality performance and price. Then we have the next one, which is the selling concept. So the selling concept holds that consumers will not buy enough of the company's products unless they, stimulated, they are stimulated through promotional efforts. So selling concept believes that for me as a consumer to buy, I must, someone must to aggressively address or promote that particular product. So it's, and some of these things, an example is like the insurance policies. You've seen the way their brokers and the agents handle their, they follow the customers every day to ensure that they are aware, they are there, and to make sure that they are, they are able to buy. So they don't believe a product would exist without, uh, uh, without promotion. Then the other one is the marketing, the marketing concept, which holds that Achieving organizational goals depends on determining the needs and the wants of the target market and delivering the desired satisfaction more effectively and efficiently than the competitor. Than the, competitor. Um, the reason why we say this is because uh, the marketing concept has, is the core of most businesses' survival because you have to identify the needs for you to be able to produce the product that the customers want. You cannot come up with a product without thinking about the customers first. So that's why we are saying it is hold that achieving the organizational goals depend on determining the needs and the wants of the target market and delivering uh, the desired satisfaction more effectively and efficiently than the competitor. We have the final one, which is the societal marketing concept. The societal marketing concept holds that organizations should determine the needs and the wants and the interests of the target market. It should then deliver the desired, it should then deliver the desired satisfaction more effectively and efficiently than the competitor in a way that maintains or improves 
or enhance the consumer's societies, the consumers and the society's well-being. So with the societal marketing concept, we can see that the consumers and the society's well-being is considered. So that's why every other organization must observe that they are able to ensure that wherever they are placed, they, they, are, they do not pollute, do pollute or emit gases that are dangerous to the community and also we can see that most organizations also are involved in giving back to the society through various programs. Let's look at the functions, marketing functions, and who performs the marketing functions. Marketing functions are activities performed within the organization that create value for specific products and services. The marketing function within the organization is a wide range, is wide ranging from the marketing function within the organization is wide ranging as it is the link between the firm and the customers. So one thing we need to know is that the marketing function is the link between the customers and the organization. The marketing department takes on the responsibility of identifying customer needs and requirements and then providing this information to other internal marketing participants such as the HR, the production, the finance, our top management to make the most desirable, to make the most desirable uh, decisions. So the marketing function uh, performed, the function performed by marketing uh, falls under three categories, that is the exchange function, the physical function, and the facilitating function. With the exchange function, uh, those are, uh, are those which promote and enable transfer of ownership of product. These include pricing, promotion, selling, public relations, advertising, and so on. Then you have the physical function, which allows for the flow of goods from the producer to the consumer which allows the flow of goods from the producer to the consumer, which includes place, the, f P of the, the other P of the four Ps, the, the, which include the P, or what we call distribution, of the four Ps. The physical function takes into account the shipping, the warehousing, the transportation, the packaging, and so on. Then. We have the other function, that is the facilitating function, and the facilitating function are those activities that assist in the execution of the exchange and the physical function. Examples include the marketing information processing, the marketing research, the customer relationship management, after sales services, and so on. So having uh, looked at the marketing function, we look at the next uh, the next slide, which we look at the importance of marketing. Here, in our own ways, we can look at what is the importance of marketing to the community, to the economy, to the society, to you as an individual, and also what is the importance of marketing to a company. But I would want to summarize this by saying that one management guru called Peter Drucker highlighted the importance of marketing to organization success through uh, a statement which says that the business enterprise has two and only or only these two basic function that is marketing and innovation marketing and innovate because marketing and innovation produce results and all the others are costs and remember in 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 the undertaking marketing we say the ultimate purpose is profitability so results are key so we look also at the core concept of marketing. The core concept of marketing, and here we are going to look at the key terms or the key words that carry marketing or the ones that make us understand what marketing is. When you're looking at the various philosophies of marketing, we saw the marketing philosophy. The same way we say the marketing concept or the marketing orientation. And we see here that marketing, the core marketing concept, we can start by understanding that marketing 
is a social and a managerial process by which individuals and groups obtain what they need or want through creating, offering, exchanging products of value with others. So we are going to look at the key or the core marketing concepts. And we are going to start with needs, wants, demand, value. They include the needs, wants, demand, value, cost, the product, satisfaction, exchange, marketing, transaction, market, marketers, relationship marketing, etc. We are going to look at some of them just to see or how to understand them from the marketing point of view. So we look at the need and the need, need, what is a need? A need is a state of felt deprivation. That state where you feel you're lacking something. And that state is where we say a state of felt deprivation of some basic satisfaction. For example, food. When you're hungry, you're hungry. There's nothing else you need. I cannot give you a stone when you're hungry. I, it's either I give you food or something, maybe a thick liquid that can help you to, to feel better. So uh, these examples of needs are food, clothing, shelter. This time they fall under what we call the basic needs. Um, then we have what we call wants. Wants are desires for specific satisfiers of need. Basically, we say wants are the specific satisfiers of a specific need. So you're hungry, you need food, but you just don't need any food. You need, I want ugali and fish. I want rice and beans. I want chapati and beef. That, those are the wants because you, they are specific satisfiers of the need. Okay? Then you have demand, and we say demands are wants for specific products backed up by the ability and the willingness to buy. So unless you have the willingness and the ability, you do not create demand. You create demand on the basis of, of every one of us would want to drive a car, but how many of us have the, create the demand? We may be willing, but we do not have the ability. Therefore, we do not create demand. Then we go to the next slide where we look at the other core concept. And the first one, we look at exchange. We are going to look at exchange, transaction, and relationship marketing. What is exchange? Uh, exchange uh, is one of the four ways you can obtain something or you can obtain a product. One could be self-production, it can be coercion, you can grab it from somebody, it can be begging, and it can be also be exchange. In business, exchange is a key way of obtaining something. And basically, exchange is an act of obtaining the desired product from someone by offering something in return. And for exchange to take place, there are some conditions that must be satisfied. One, there must be at least two parties. Two, the parties must have something of value to offer. And three, each party must be capable of communication and delivery. And the fourth one is that each party should be free to accept or reject the offer. It should not be coerced of either to accept or reject. And also each party should believe that whatever they are doing is desirable or it's appropriate to do it. So no one should do what they feel is not right. So then uh, the other one is transaction. And transaction is because these are just basic units of exchange and they, there are some few elements that must be satisfied for for it to take place. For example, the dimension of transaction, at least two things of value, agreed upon condition, time of agreement, uh, and so on. And then we have the other one is relationship marketing. And here the organization is the organization commitment to developing and enhancing long-term mutual benefit relationship with profitable or potentially profitable customers and this one basically ensures that uh, organization have long-term uh, relationship with their customers and this ensures loyalty uh, customer retention and so on then the other key term is we need to know what is a market and what are markets 
what is a market? The market we know is the physical area we go do the buying and the selling. But in marketing, the key term market, we mean the people. The people forms the market. That's why we say the target market. When you are making a particular product, we go to the target market, the people we think are likely to use a particular product, we seek information from them, and then we come up with a product that is most appropriate to fit that particular group of people, the target market. So market consists of all potential customers sharing a particular need or want who might be willing and able to exchange, who are willing and able to engage in exchange to satisfy that need or want. Then marketers. Marketers is anyone seeking a resource from someone else and willing to offer something of value in exchange. So what is the other key term? The key word is, the, pro the other core concept is products and services. The products, we said, can take different forms. But before we look at the different forms, let's see what is a product. These are, it's, these are anything or it's anything that can be offered to satisfy a need or a want. Anything that can be offered to satisfy a need or a want. And products can take different forms. And the first one is goods, the physical goods, something that you can touch, a pen, a book. Then it can also take a form of services, and these are the intangible uh, services. Services are intangible because you cannot touch, you cannot feel them. And you cannot even know the outcome of a service before it has taken place. So that's why we say they are intangible. And then uh, the events and experiences then we have persons, individuals, and then ideas or courses, places or destination, organization. All these can take forms of products because they can be offered to satisfy a need or a want. Then let's look at value, that is customer perceived value. And also we are going to look at satisfaction. The customer perceived value is the difference between the prospective customer evaluation of all the benefits and all the cost of an offering and the perceived alternatives. So we have different uh, benefits or different uh, perceived value, for example, at uh, total customer benefits as, uh, as you to total consumer cost. You look at the benefit versus the cost. If the cost is higher, you feel you paid more than you benefited, then you feel like there's no value for money. And that's why every time the customers are always say, I need value for my money. So then we have what we call customer satisfaction, and this is the degree to which product meets or exceeds the customer's expectations. So when a person has an experience with a product or service, there are three possible outcomes with regard to satisfaction. Is either you have that uh, bad feeling, of n a negative feeling, a bad feeling, or you're just there, you're just satisfied, but sure, you're not so, but there's also that good feeling of positivity. So when you're dealing with, uh, when your the product outcome or performance exceeds the customer's expectation, you basically feel very satisfied, and that's what we call the customer delight. And then when the, the product's performance is below the customer's expectations, we say the customer is dissatisfied. And basically there's that where the performance and the outcome are almost the same, so the customer is basically satisfied. But then the negative experience or the dissatisfied customer is likely to, to detect, to, to defect and buy from a competitor. So it's always good to make sure that we offer the best products to our customers and then when the product is uh, is a bit neutral or it's not as delightful as we had expect this customer is likely to switch okay so with a dissatisfied customer he can basically go to another without issue but for this other one who is satisfied but not fully he's not uh, he can always move okay so we have to make sure that this customer is not switching to to another brand 
and of course when sorry so and then when you when the, the customer delight uh, is experienced the customer is likely to become loyal and do repeat purchases and even refer others to your product so we go to the next slide and here we are looking at the challenges of marketing in the 21st century what are these challenges that marketers are facing in today's world one of them is the most obvious is the information technology revolution we all know that with this an era of inform information technology revolution and it has it comes with its challenges also the rapid globalization the changing world economy the call for more ethics and social responsibilities the new marketing landscape whereby the consumer is the king and he dictates everything and also the the most recent what we are experiencing today the global pandemic this one affects marketing in a big way so that comes to the end of our class today and we are going to meet for our next class which we are going to look at the marketing mix elements. Thank you very much. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988 Your ID is the account number 2000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.